Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hype RC. In today's video, we're going to be going over this 100% Enjora TRX4M kangaroo build that I've done. In a previous video, we actually put the kangaroo and tarantula chassis side by side and did a comparison on them. And then the next video I did was a full video on this tarantula build. This video, we're going to go over the kangaroo build. We're going to look at the pros and cons of this rig. So let's take it out and hit the rocks and get an up close look at it on the bench stick around and check it out i know what you're going to ask how many parts does it take to build a trx 4m from scratch with all enjora parts and the answer is a lot but a couple of the highlights are the main thing is going to be this kangaroo carbon fiber chassis all the parts are going to be sitting on that but we have all enjora axle housings all enjora axles shocks links the only thing on this entire build that is not and Jorah is going to be this Hoplex transmission case. I like it because it's got these red details around the edges. Makes it kind of stand out and pop. It'll look real good sitting inside that carbon fiber chassis. But I'm going to get all these parts put together. We'll get this rig over to the bench and check it out. All right, guys, so let's take an up-close look at this all Enjor TRX-4M rig that we built. So we started off with the carbon fiber kangaroo chassis. This is a flat panel chassis that you put together yourself. It looks kind of odd online, but it looks a lot better in person. It's got some different geometry on it than you see on most of the other rigs. So I'm pleasantly surprised with it. It's very well built. It's very stiff. And then underneath this rig, it's all Enjor. So we have the aluminum axle housings with the extended aluminum aluminum axles inside. We did do some brass hexes that extend each wheel out six millimeters to give this a little bit wider of a stance. We did go with the stainless steel and drawer drive shafts, the high clearance brass links. We do have over and under drive in this rig. Uh, they're spherical diffs. On the front end of this, we went with a lot of brass. So we have the uh, diff cover in brass. We have the front steering link in brass. We also have the casters in brass and the steering knuckles in brass. Then we went with the Enjora bead locks in red and then the Enjora uh, comp pin tires, which are some of my favorite. On the front of this, we have the seven kilogram Enjora servo, which I like more than the 11 because it is waterproof with an aluminum steering servo horn on there. We did go with the Enjora um, pro motor in this on an aluminum housing with metal low diff gears in it. And then to finish it all off, we put it on these 53 millimeter Enjora oil filled shocks, which I am pleasantly surprised with. They are very nice. They work very well. So I really like this rig. Let's get it out on the rocks and take it for a crawl and see how, exactly how well it performs. <laughs> Thank you. 
guys, I had an absolute blast getting out and test running this rig. So let's talk about the overall performance of our Kangaroo build. So the Kangaroo carbon fiber chassis is what initially made me start this build. And then it just went from there to just go ahead and just making a huge purchase from Enjora and getting all the parts to see how well they would all perform together. But the main thing I wanted to focus on was the Kangaroo chassis in this build. So let's talk about the pros and cons of it. The chassis itself is very lightweight. It weighs like 25 to 30 percent of the Defender and Bronco body. It is very stiff, so you don't have any unwanted flex or twist in the frame at all, so that's a nice pro. It lowers the center of gravity of your overall skid plate and everything by a lot and just allows you to keep this rig planted. So the overall performance of this was what I expected from this type of frame, but it did not disappoint in any of those categories. But there are a few cons on this rig, and the number one con for me is there's a bracing that's right here that goes on the outside, and it limits a few positions there on the rear shock mount. I would have liked to have had that move forward maybe one or two holes that I can't actually mount there because of that cross brace being in the way. The assembly was okay. The instructions are just that. They are okay, and it was a medium put you know build for this, so if you're going to go and put this thing together and you don't really have a lot of experience, it could be frustrating. The next thing I want to talk about is that I did high center this a few times and that's what you're going to get when you get a more lower planted rig like this. So that is just one thing you're going to have to watch out for and hit different lines. But the overall performance of this was very nice. Would I buy it again? Yes, I would. It's going to be for the more performance oriented guys. It's not going to win any beauty contest, but it does do a very good job at what it was meant to do. So don't forget to support your local hobby shops. Bash Car Repeat. Hit that subscribe and like button for me and ring the bell so you can catch my next video. We'll see you next time.